So you want to create a mod for Kerbal Space Program, but you don't know how. This video will take you through how I make my plugins, but it should also show you, if you're new here, how to create your first mod as well. Your first step is to open Visual Studio. After doing that, you want to create a new project, but not just any project. You want to look specifically for the .NET Framework class library. This is what we'll be using for our plugin. We're going to call it any name we want, but we're going to call it Random Part Explosion, because that's what we're making. We're making a plugin so that when you press a button, a random part on your current ship will explode. Now for the .NET framework you can just leave this at 4.7.2 i haven't tried this on 1.8 but 1.9 is the most recent version so that's what we're going to be using and i actually have to call it random part explosion 2 because i already have an existing project but now you can just go ahead and press create but links that's it right you can just start coding now i can make a plugin i can make whatever i want now right can't i no 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 you need to add references first you're not going to be able to code from the get-go what you need to do is you need to add some references so you can go to project add reference the ones you specifically want are the assembly c shop first pass the unity engine ui the input legacy module for this specific plugin, the assembly C sharp, and the Unity Engine core module. I think that's everything. Oh, and Unity Engine. That's what we're going to want this time. But obviously, I have these listed here. You won't if you've not made a plugin before. So you want to go to Browse. At least this is what I do. I go to Browse. I go to Kerbal Space Program, KSPX64 Data, Managed, and I find the relevant stuff in here. You just click the ones that you need, the required ones, and there you go. You add them, you press OK, and there you go references added and then you just at the top put using unity engine next we want to make sure that kerbal space program actually knows that what we're making is a ksp add-on so at the top you need to put square brackets ksp add-on then open brackets ksp add-on dot startup and then dot flight specifically for this one this is what i do most of my plugins start in flight you can change this to stuff like main menu or tracking station or the editors it doesn't really matter which but this one will start during flight and then we put comma and then false now this is where we want it to start up once or not if we start it up just once you go into flight it starts up and that's it so if we come back out and back into flight again it won't start up so we put false so that every time you're in flight mode the plugin starts again and we're going to rename the class to random part explosion just for simplicity you don't actually have to but for simplicity that's what we're going to do but we're not done yet we need to put a colon and then mono behavior which means we're inheriting from mono behavior which means we can use all the functions that unity uses and now we can actually start coding so we're going to start off with a method so we're going to create a public void update now this method is called every frame by unity by the game and everything inside this method here will be executed every single frame so now we need to check if the key is being held down and to do that we use the input legacy module reference that we added earlier it will allow us to check if the keyboard is being pressed in the specific way we want so i'm going to have alt 1 as the hot key for this to work so we need to create a boolean called key and then input dot get key and then left alt or no key code dot left alt and then we also want input dot get key down and then key code dot alpha 1 which is the number one on your keyboard. So we can now detect if the key is being pressed. So we just add if key. If you want to be fancy about it, you can do if key equals true. And now we need to generate, we need to find a random part on the craft. In Kerbal Space Program, parts are stored in a list of parts because it's uh, it's object oriented. So you create a list of parts and we're just going to call it parts. And we want the parts currently stored on the active vessel. So this is the vessel that's currently being controlled. So we will need flight globals dot active vessel dot parts and that gets us the parts on the active vessel stores it in this list here and that means that we can access it now we can do that without having to define a list of parts we could just do this all in one but we don't we don't need to it's just a lot easier to separate it out into its constituent parts now we need to find a random index so we're going to create an integer index there are multiple ways to do this there is a unity version of random but there is also the system dot random which is what i use because i, I just do it the old-fashioned way so we're going to create an instance of that equals new System dot random. We could define a seed, but I'm not going to, so that is completely different each time this is run. If you define a seed, it means the same parts will be exploded each time. Now all we need to do is index equals rnd.next. And then we want the inclusive and exclusive start and end. So we're going to start at one and end at parts.count. Now the reason why I'm generating the random number between 1 and starting on 1 is because at the index 0, that's the root node, and I don't want the root node being destroyed. Now we need to make sure that the part gets destroyed. Now luckily Kerbal Space Program has a method for this that we can access without having to make it do it ourselves. Literally all you have to do is get the list, use the index in that list, and call explode. And there we go. That's it. That's the plugin. It's all done. Now what I do is I just press F6, which builds the plugin, and then you can get the DLL from the file location it built to, and put 
put that in your KSP folder. So then you want to go to where that is located. For example, I have part explosion here. I can just go to there, bin debug, and then sort by date modified. And there it is. There's our DLL. That is the built version of our program. So now we can go into our Kerbal Space Program folder and just put it there. So now I have a massive ship on the runway. And if we press Alt 1, a random part explodes. If we keep pressing Alt 1, random parts will explode on the ship until eventually all of them have been destroyed. And what am I even controlling? Oh, <laughs> there we go. We've, we've completely destroyed the ship. <laughs> So there's our working plugin. I hope that helps. I hope that gave some insight into what happens behind the scenes because some of these plugins actually take a very long time to make. For example, I've got one coming up where the planet will change randomly. So I'll change it between Kerbin or Eve. And my goal is to land on the VAB, but currently I don't have that one working just yet. So anyway, if you want to see more tutorials and more behind the scenes stuff, subscribe. This is going to probably be a one off though, unless you guys really want to see me do something else. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.